Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, my go-to for building a website and online shop. Hello everyone. Today's video is all about how I set up my palette and store my oil paints. For a longer, more comprehensive version of this video, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash happydartist. For materials, I usually need a palette knife, a palette, um, some linseed oil. I use the Gamblin brand but uh, I pour it into this smaller jar just for easier access. Uh, a silly coil jar that has Gamsol, my favorite paint solvent, and um, a sheet of this blue shop towel, which you can get at any hardware store. So normally, in order to avoid wasting paints, I store any unused paints in this, I think it's called a scrapbook container or like a document container. It's basically like a plastic Tupperware that's flat <laughs> and uh, meant for holding papers. Um, so what I do is I actually tape a piece of glass on the inside and this is a glass I just popped out of like a frame that I didn't need. Um, and I use masking tape to tape it so I just deposit all my unused paint in here and then um, I close this, seal it, and then I pop it in the freezer when I don't need to use the paint. That is the key to um, helping your paint last longer and not dry up. So due to you know the holidays and some of my um, other deadlines, I actually haven't painted for about two weeks. So we're gonna test and see which of these colors is um, still wet enough to use and which of the colors I have to replace. The way I test the paints is pretty funny. I literally just poke each dollop of paint with my palette knife. And if the paint feels wet and buttery, that means I can still use it. If the paint feels tacky and pasty, then I know I have to throw it out and make a new batch. After testing, I transfer the good paint onto my palette using my palette knife, making sure to wipe it in between each new color. I also put a little dot of the bad paints just as a placeholder on the palette so I can put the fresh batch of the same color in its place later. Okay, for this part, I'm going to be using some Gamsol and possibly touching it with my hand. So I just put on some black nitro gloves uh, just for protection because you don't want to be touching Gamsol. It's not the best for your skin. Um, yeah, so to clean this glass palette from all the kind of dried, crusty paint, I just take my palette knife and I scrape it. You don't have to scrape all of it off perfectly, but just scrape off as much of the chunky bits as you can. And then I kind of just wipe it onto my napkin here. And then I bunch up the towel, uh, dip it in the Gamsol, and then start wiping it clean. For this part, you also want to make sure your room is well ventilated. So either having like a ventilation system or a window open, because um, the fumes from Gamsol are not the best. It can give you a headache and probably not good for you in the long term. Um, if you encounter bits like here that are still stuck, you can just kind of scrape them again. They usually soften with the Gamsol. And then so after that, you can kind of just wipe your palette knife clean and wipe off the excess and voila your glass storage palette is clean now we can close this um, again to prevent the fumes from spreading i just close this tight clip it sealed shut and then i put it aside and now let's move on to uh, depositing new colors on our wooden palette uh, first, I grabbed all of the colors that need to be replenished on my palette, and yes, I can see that some of these tubes are nearing the end of their lifespan, and I should probably go to the art store soon. Now, this step is something I learned from my teachers in art school, which is to pre-mix your oil paint with some linseed oil, especially the earthy colors, such as the umbers and siennas, because they're quite dry and pasty by nature, even fresh out of the tube. It's better to use the linseed oil sparingly because just like salting your food, you can always add more if you need, but it's harder to take it away once you've added too much. So I usually just dip my palette knife into my jar of linseed oil and drop one or two drops per dollop of paint, adding more if I need. 
but given the size of my paint dollops, I rarely need more than just one to two drops of oil. And depending on the brand and color of your oil paints, you will eventually develop a good intuition for which colors need what amount of linseed oil. The linseed oil is great for making the paint buttery, easy to spread, and most importantly, it helps keep the paint fresh for longer, especially if you freeze your unused paint. But you definitely don't want to use too much linseed oil or else it'll make the paint way too runny and hard to control. After I'm done mixing the paint, I wipe away the excess with a paper towel dipped in Gamsol, and then the final step to setting up my palette is to add my medium, which is a mixture of linseed oil and oleo res gel. Also, I know this entire palette setup process may seem long, but I promise it's only because I'm filming a tutorial and explaining each step. In real life, this should take no more than a few minutes, especially once you get the hang of it. Okay, and now finally, I will show you how to put the paints away after you're done painting for the day, which is pretty self-explanatory. I simply use the palette knife to transfer the unused paint dollops and unused medium from my wooden palette into my container. Then I close the container and pop it into the freezer. When you're ready to paint again, you don't need to thaw or defrost the paint. It's ready to go right away. Miraculous, isn't it? Finally, I scrape away the excess paint on my wooden palette before wiping it down with a paper towel soaked in Gamsol. It's important to wipe away the unused paint on a wooden palette or else the paint will dry onto the palette and become impossible to remove later on. Now this may seem like a high maintenance way to set up a palette, but I think it's worth it for the privilege of using a luxurious and ergonomic wooden artist palette. I also have come to enjoy the kind of warm up and cool down palette sessions before and after I paint. I now look forward to it as a satisfying and soothing ritual. And that about wraps up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope it was useful. And once again, if you'd like to see a longer, more thorough version of this tutorial, along with hundreds of hours of painting tutorials, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash happy artist. And of course, you guessed it, my eternal never ending sale is still going on in my shop. So if you'd like 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art Art gift boxes, all available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the art community. Squarespace is the best platform to create a professional website and online shop. Their beautifully designed templates are easy to use for beginners and look great on both desktop and mobile. I've sold my art through Squarespace for almost 10 years and I can attest to the quality of their online commerce features, whether you want to sell digital or physical items. They also provide useful analytics that help you make the most of your online business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash happydartist to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.